Distance learning can sometimes make you sad. You're trying so hard, and nothing seems to be working. Sometimes it just takes forever to, to pull up the thing that you need to pull up to show your students, and there's just dead air while students patiently wait for you to finish. And then you get that email from the student that said they can't find the link, and so you have to go and find it, and copy it, and paste it. And all the while, your students continue to just wait there patiently as you try to get your life in order. The Elgato Stream Deck has helped me solve these problems and has helped create an engaging classroom experience for my middle schoolers. Also, all those sound effects in the intro were not added as I edited the video, but were cued by the push of a button on the Stream Deck. <laughs> Hi ladies and gents, my name is Tom Gibson, and if you are new here, my channel is all about helping middle school STEM teachers design an engaging classroom experience for their students and a fulfilling teaching experience for themselves. I wish this video was sponsored by the Elgato Stream Deck, but it's not. I bought the Elgato Stream Deck with my own money. The Stream Deck is a dock that has 15 buttons on it that you can program to do virtually anything you want on your computer, whether you're running a PC or a Mac. And it's helped solve a lot of the problems that I talked about in the intro, as well as improving my workflow with remote teaching in a lot of ways that I wasn't really anticipating until I actually got it and started playing around with it. It comes in a few different versions. The 15 button one that I got is $150. They have a six button one that is about $80 and they have a mobile app uh, that you can connect and then push buttons on your phone and it does stuff on your computer. And the app is $3 a month at the time of recording this. And so I wanna walk you through some of the things that I can do with the Stream Deck and how it's actually really helped me with remote teaching. So at the basic level, you can program a button to open up an app like Zoom, which is great, but we can do better with the power of the Stream Deck. Instead of just opening up Zoom, you could have it open up your specific Zoom room using whatever link it is that you normally use, which is great, but we can do better because there's still other tasks that need to happen when you start a Zoom class, like turning on the chat, turning on the participant panel, turning on your camera, turning on your microphone. And so the way that I've utilized it is to use the multi-action feature where you can actually say, when I push one button, I want you to do this and then this and then this and then this and then this, all by pushing one button. So when I push my Zoom room button, it opens up a link to my Zoom room, which then opens up the app Zoom and brings up my actual Zoom room. That can take a few seconds, and so I say, I put a little timer there for about eight seconds uh, to give the computer time to do that before it does the next command. By that point, my Zoom room is open. Then I have it do the quick key that would open up my participant panel, which is Alt-U on my PC. Then I have it open up the chat, which is Alt-H. I do put a 0.5 second delay in between those two because I found that sometimes it was doing the participant panel but not the chat, so just giving it that little sec half a second uh, to, to kind of get one thing open before it opens the next is helpful. Then I have it do the hotkey to turn on my camera, which is Alt-V. Then I have it do the hotkey to turn on my microphone, which is Alt-A. And so I push that button, and within a few seconds, my entire Zoom room is open, participant panel, chat panel, camera, microphone, all ready to go. Another common use that I have for it is for pasting really common things that I have to type out or send to parents or students or anybody else. The one that I use the most is actually pasting my Zoom link info. So that way if a student is like, I can't find the Zoom link, I can actually just push this button and it pastes my Zoom link with the little extra code and the password. And so when I am setting this up, I just put the text that I want to paste whenever I push that button button and then it pastes it. And so that ends up saving a lot of time as well. Another message that I paste is I, I generally try to get students to turn their cameras on in class, but there's not really a punishment and I don't want to publicly ask them, can you please turn your camera on? So a lot of times I send them a private chat that says, would you mind turning your camera on during class? And instead of typing that out, I can just double click on that student's name in the participant panel and then push that button and then hit enter. And then I actually could probably program it to hit enter for me. I don't have to enter. I'm going to change that. So I just push the button, it pastes the text, and it hits enter and sends it to the student. Another common use is pulling up all of my class calendars. And so I have four different Google Sheets that I use as class calendars. And so whenever I'm ready to lesson plan, I need to open up all four. I could bookmark them and say, okay, open this one, now open this one, now open this one, now open this one. But the great thing about the Elgato Stream Deck is that I can push a button and it will open all four of those each in its own tab one right after the other just from pushing the 
button once. And it's really nice is I don't even have to have Google Chrome open to do this. I can be in a separate app and then push that button and it'll pop up Google Chrome and then pop up all four of those calendars. And it's just so much faster and so much easier than just opening Chrome, going to the bookmarks, opening each one individually. You can also do this if there's like four or five websites that you always have open whenever you are teaching a Zoom class and you've just kept them open as well as like maybe 85 other tabs on your computer, you can just make sure that one button opens up your five specific websites that you need to use every day that you teach a class. Our next tip is coming from Darren Nakakihara, who's another middle school teacher YouTuber, and he posted a video on the Stream Deck about a month or two months ago, and it was the one that kind of like, okay, after watching his video, it's like, I'm gonna get a Stream Deck now. And so take it away, Darren. Hey, thanks, Tom. All right, I'm gonna show you my Zoom profile on my Stream Deck, and I'm gonna zoom in on one button in particular. See what I did there? Let's go. So the one that I really want to focus in on for you guys and show you how I built it was this share screen. For those of you that know me, you know that I love to share just a portion of my screen because I feel like it's just the best experience for my kids when I'm sharing just I'm able to zoom in on certain part, parts of my screen. So this is how I built this button right here. First, you start out with the multi action and you drag that onto a button and then it's gonna come up with this screen right here and from here you can program it to do a series of clicks and for me I wanted to share screen first so I took the hotkey dragged it in here and on a Mac it is shift command and S from there I wanted it to scooch over one place and so you do that with a um, control command and the right arrow and then another hotkey is just the enter or return key and so I wanted it to share screen move over one spot and then select that spot and so this is what it looks like in um, in your zoom so when you push the button it's going to essentially click this button right here it's going to move it over one space to right here and you can see it says desktop 2 right so I want it to go to advanced and then go to the second spot and then share the screen but in order to get that to work you have to do this one time before you let the kids in so if you just get in the habit of starting your meeting prior to letting any of your students in you're going to click on share screen, click on advanced, click on portion of the screen, and then I always click uh, share sound and optimize for video, and then I click share, and then you can see that it's sharing just like a little bit of my screen, and then I just click the button again, and it unshares, okay? So once you do that the first time, it will automatically go to that setting every time you push the button during that meeting so as you can see I push the button and it goes to the next and then it goes see what I'm saying so if you don't do that <clears throat> and you just click this no. <laughs> and it shares the whole desktop I don't know if you can see that green thing but it it goes to whatever setting you have right so advanced setting share portion of screen voila that's why you have to do it one time before you let your kids in and then it'll work the rest of your meeting but you just kind of have to get in the habit of that so there you go you guys that is how I programmed my share a portion of your screen button and I swear you guys I use that button more than any other button <laughs> except for maybe crickets thanks for having me on back to you Tom I remember when Darren was posting on his Instagram stories about that specific quick key that he was talking about and trying to figure out like, there's gotta be a way to screen share like with the Stream Deck. And so after he sent that to me, I ended up programming that in because I was doing the exact same thing of like clicking on screen share, going to advance, clicking on show a portion of the screen, and it was just wasting time. And the last thing that I do every day with the Stream Deck is use sound effects. The really helpful ones are the the timer ones. I've got like a, I've got the 30 second Jeopardy 
timer. And I've got a one minute long elevator music timer. And what's really nice is I can look at the stream deck and it shows how much time is left. And I can say, students, you have one minute to complete this task. When the music stops, we will continue. And of course, using the air horn to say, let's get hyped for some math. And I teach middle school, so of course there's going to be a fart sound effect. Sound effects can only go so far when you're teaching remotely and we want to make an engaging learning experience for our students as well. And so I've linked to another video on how to actually make breakout rooms an engaging and meaningful, and dare I say, a place where students are actually collaborating and working. <laughs> and so click on the video right there. Also be sure to subscribe to Darren's channel. I've linked to him on the screen as well as in the description down below. My name is Tom Gibson. I hope you learned something today that'll help you design an engaging classroom experience for your students and a fulfilling teaching experience for yourself, and I will see you in the next video.